Howdy folks and happy holidays. I am the Comic Cowboy and in this video I'm super stoked to share with you my high grade X-Men collection that I put together nearly a complete Silver Age run. And the video itself is about how you go about putting together your own run whether that's uh, concentrating on a particular hero, uh, a genre, a theme, or the title which is probably the best way to go about it and through the lens of a particular grade. So when I went about putting this collection together, uh, I like the X-Men. That's the number one reason I actually went after this particular title. And I think if you're going to put together a run yourself, you do want to initially uh, forget about the investment, forget about the speculation, and just find uh, material that you've liked or that you've collected over the years that you want to concentrate I'm putting together a run. And the first thing I'll say, when you sit down and you put together your strategy on how to put together a run, uh, whether uh, you want to do uh, the Submariner, uh, whether you want to do uh, the Avengers, these books are raw, they're just here for examples, or um, if you want to do what I did, which is go after uh, Silver Age X-Men, pick the grade. The grade will help you narrate and curate uh, both the sort of story of what you're doing. All the books are going to be grouped together and it's going to help you find the right um, books to buy and purchase and just gives you your own lens of what to pick up because the consistency in the collection is not the consistency of the page quality and it's not the uh, consistency of the material. It is the consistency of the grade uh, that's going to give you uh, the best razor uh, in terms of determining what it is that you'd like to buy when you see the material. I started with 9.0 uh, because I wanted to go high grade on this X-Men material. And for the most part, since that was the bar, uh, there were other moments uh, during the time that I assembled this collection, which took me uh, the better of six years because I just um, proactively went after books and let books come to me uh, looking for the best example that I could find over time. I didn't want to rush it. And there's a lot of material. There's up to 50 books. I cut it off like just past 50 on the Silver Age uh, X-Men Marvel stuff. But that's just the line I drew in the sand. You can actually pick your own line. Uh, some people want to go the whole run, uh, which can be quite exhaustive depending on what it is you select. With Silver Age X-Men, when they started to reprint uh, the covers, um, I cut it off. And when some of the uh, more modern artists started to uh, do the work in this title that the line was best known for in the 70s, uh, I stopped there. So the first thing I did, as I said, was select a grade. I went with 9-0. That means that was the bar that I set uh, for most of the keys uh, and some of the books that were non-keys or minor keys, I went higher grade because I could. They're less expensive and there's reasons to go ultra high grade on non-keys and get the best affordable copy you can find of the keys at the grade that you set aside. So since I set a 9-0 bar, um, this book, which is the most uh, significant book that uh, you'll see today, because sadly, I don't have X-Men 1 in 9-0, although it is on the radar, and I have seen uh, copies come up uh, for auction, you know, over the last couple years, and I just haven't really um, drawn the purse strings yet on that one. I tend to. Uh, here's X-Men 4, White Pages. Uh, it's probably the second most significant book in the entire run. Uh, it's the second appearance of Magneto. It's first Quicksilver. It's first Scarlet Witch. I don't need to tell you about those two. They've been all over uh, the MCU in both movies, cartoons, TV, you name it. And it's just a really good book. Uh, and it's been particularly hard to find over the years. Uh, so I went for a copy, White Pages, I bought it off at auction. I think that's where you probably get the best price uh, for this type of high-end material. Uh, it can go for a bit higher when you see Buy It Now on eBay. So with this book, I was just picking my moment. I knew I needed to have four in 9.0 consistent with the rest of the collection. And don't compromise. Like Wait for your moment to get the book in the grade that you like. Uh, because you don't want to go 9-0 across your entire collection and then you go 7-5 or 6-5 or a different grade on one of the mega keys in the run. But set 
realistic expectations on what it is you think you can acquire and what it is you think you can collect. So if you set the bar too high in ultra high grade, you may find you never complete the collection. You want to do it in a reasonable amount of time so that's satisfying for you. So all the mega keys or all the significant keys I endeavored for the most part to get uh, in 9 0 as you see here. Now we're moving into um, what I would call minor keys. <laughs> you know, this is the first appearance of Unis the Untouchable. I'm not really sure who that guy is. I don't think he really appeared uh, in too much more material uh, in the X Men universe. And it nevertheless is an early book in the run, uh, copies one through 10, whether that's the Avengers or the X Men or whatever run, The Incredible Hulk, the FF, that you're trying to complete. The first 10 books are usually uh, some of the most difficult and most sought after. They're earlier, they're less common, uh, and it's harder to get them uh, without paying quite a bit in high grade. This book here uh, has sold rather relatively inexpensive in relation to its peer set uh, than other copies here. And this is cool. This is a Rocky Mountain copy. So as I indicated at the top of the set, you want to find, if possible, once you set the bar of grade, you're going to go no lower than 8.0, no lower than 7.0, no lower than 9.0 as I've done. You want to find, at grade, the best example in terms of page quality, eye appeal, how the book uh, looks to you. And if you can, if you can get a pedigree copy, uh, you're stoked. Uh, it's hard to find the pedigree copies. They're not always the highest graded example. This is um, Rocky Mountain. It's a, a pedigree that is um, somewhat well known. Some of the examples that I've seen in Rocky Mountain haven't been the highest grade, uh, but they've been particularly nice copies. Uh, it's just a nice well-centered book. Sometimes with the X-Men, some of the underlying print uh, can come out from beneath the cover and it really doesn't uh, diminish the grade. Uh, it's not the example with this book, but you may see it uh, in a few of the other books uh, today. Um, moving along, here's X-Men 6. This book here, uh, and I was uh, pleased to get it in, in 9.2. Uh, if you can, it's not a key, um, but it's a significant cover and it's got this uh, Submariner crossover. This is a very desirable book. And I think this represents, uh, past the keys, sort of like the next tier of books that are going to be a little bit more difficult to obtain uh, because of the cover or there may be an appearance of someone else that's interesting or there may be the first team up, the first appearance, etc. in title uh, for a hero that showed up somewhere else. So this one, Submariner, uh, is a really fantastic book here. I love it. Uh, moving along, here's number nine. And again, uh, if you can get non-keys or minor keys in pedigree, uh, you're in really good shape for your run. It really set your collection apart. And that also sets uh, a really high bar if you can get the pedigree books. Uh, and they just come to market um, from time to time, whether that's the collection or an actual uh, pedigree example. There's like a, a Don and Maggie Thompson collection here, which is in the pedigree, uh, but that's in the stack. Uh, here it is in 9.2. Uh, and then this book, here's, here's kind of a guy that's been forgotten. It's the first Silver Age appearance of Kazar. Uh, he was a, a Golden Age a hero, sort of a villain, uh, this Neolithic man. Uh, on the cover. And all these books, um, they're great because they've got these Kirby covers. Uh, they're really uh, fantastic, beautiful books to collect. Um, and they're all in these old, um, slim, credit card style uh, CGC cases here because that's just the time I bought these books, which was about 2013 uh, to present day. I just got that X-Men 4, uh, but most of these books I got right out of the gate when I first started collecting the X-Men stuff in 2013 and 2014 because uh, I knew I wanted to go after the collection and I immediately started running and gunning trying to get the uh, premium books which were the keys in the run because I knew it would be a pain in the ass down the line as it is. You will find when you're putting together a run or a collection disproportionately the keys are more valuable and they're more expensive and they accelerate in value. 
take your time and opportunistically find the other books in the run because they don't appreciate, particularly in the Silver Age, with the same acceleration as the keys. In fact, some of the non-key books, looking at GPA analysis in the X-Men run, have bobbed and weaved in price over the years. They really haven't accelerated. Uh, you know, one of the strategies that I'll share with you that I think might be helpful uh, because you want to, when you invest your time and your money into building this kind of a collection, you don't want to have a uh, dead weight in your portfolio of books, which is um, what I would say non-key books at the bar of the grade that you set because they tend to be steady water, uh, which is fine because money in the pocket is money burned. So when you've got a CGC book, it can um, really be a different type of asset for you. That said, go ultra high grade uh, if you can. Ultra high grade really is 9.6 and above, uh, but I also consider 9.4 sort of on the cusp of ultra high grade because ultra high grade books have their own sort of niche and collectors that uh, will allow you to get a little bit more of an upside uh, in your investment if you can. Uh, so here is, you know, um, a, a great cover here, X-Men 47. Nothing really is particularly significant about this book. Uh, so I took the opportunity to get a nice white page copy uh, in 9.4. And don't be afraid, you know, if you get this book or similar book in a 9.2 or a 9.4, if you have an opportunity to upgrade it without paying a significant amount of money to do so in comparison to what you paid for the original book, uh, go ahead and take that opportunity. I have done that. What I don't do, uh, as some collectors do, is do placeholders. I think it's just, there's no real point to it. Money's precious, time's precious. Why put books into your collection with the intention that you intend to replace it at some point in time. I just don't think that's sound uh, in terms of collecting. Nevertheless, if you have a chance to upgrade a book that you feel solid is in the collection, that's in your run at 9.2 or 9.4 because you see an opportunity, do so and then take your book and sell it off yourself however you choose to see fit. Um, the other thing I'll point out, as you spend a lot of time building a collection, uh, building a run, you become very intimate with the material with respect to little subtle nuances uh, in the run with respect to uh, particular covers that um, have color displays that are a little bit harder to find in high grade. Oftentimes it's an orange or a red or a black. And those types of subtle differences really give you evidence why some books are going to be higher grade and higher value uh, for you that is hard to uh, determine initially at the surface. They're tougher books. So when someone says there's a tougher book in the run, it could be in the middle of the run and that's not necessarily telling you that there's less supply of the book. This one in particular, uh, and there's some, whether you're superstitious um, or believe in karma are just sort of strangely weird to get and strangely hard to acquire. And who knows, potentially there were lower publication numbers. I don't spend a lot of time looking at the CGC census because that's not really going to indicate if there's more copies of 7 than 8 or 9 than 14. So that's really just pointing towards CGC slab material. And with uh, Silver Age, uh, a lot of this material lives in raw state. So I don't really trust that in telling me how scarce a book is. A lot of these are just simply hard to obtain. As was number seven, uh, which is the second appearance of the blob. Uh, and it's sort of an early book in the run. And it can be rather expensive because I think collectors uh, realize that when they're completing a run, even as a standalone book, uh, this is a particularly nice copy to have. And here's a, an example of a book that X-Men 11 and 9-2, first appearance of The Stranger, uh, is not, he's not a significant hero in the X-Men lore. It's this, this very large figure here. He looks like a mad scientist. Uh, this book was particularly hard for me to obtain in higher grade, and I got it at 9-2, uh, 
uh, which is phenomenal. But if the book is a, a key, meaning there's a first appearance or an origin of that may suggest that it's some level of key, uh, I wouldn't spend a lot of time fretting on a minor hero's first appearance, right? So The Stranger, uh, I would get this. I think the 9-2 came along and I had an opportunity to pick it up. I would get this book at the base grade that you've set for your collection. Again, whether that's 9-0 or 8-5 or whatever it is that you've set, uh, go ahead and do so. Um, this is awesome. This is the first appearance of the Changeling and there's a Spider-Man uh, appearance. I think the significance of this book and the interest in this book, pardon the glare, uh, which is jumping off here like comets. Um, there you go. You can see it now. We're just shooting in daylight here. And if I may interrupt the broadcast uh, for a plea, and that is, if you can, if you like the material, uh, if you want to see more of it and you enjoy it, do go ahead and subscribe if you can. I don't have a whole lot of subscribers here. I've got a fair number of views, but without subscribers, I don't really have that confidence vote yet to produce more material, and I'm really doing this stuff. I'm not a dealer. I'm not reselling this stuff. It's really just entirely for the enjoyment of doing it. I like showing the books. I like sharing with viewers. I like getting comments and interacting with the, the, with the community, whether that's on Instagram or uh, Facebook or in these videos itself. So subscribe. And if you subscribe, uh, that gives me some indicators uh, that fans out there want to see more videos and there's an appetite for this stuff. Because trust me, uh, it takes a lot of time and effort uh, to get all these books out of the various places. I keep them, put them all here, and kind of walk through them and curate different themes and different stories in the YouTube videos. Uh, so if you're down and you like it and you want to see more, by all means, uh, subscribe or it will die on the vine. And I started the channel basically uh, because I thought when I looked on YouTube and I searched for uh, Golden Age Collecting, Silver Age Collecting, uh, there really wasn't a lot of material out there from an investing perspective uh, that specifically concentrated on themes and approaches with respect to people that buy material at auction, with respect to people that analyze GPA data, uh, with people that are active on the CGC boards, uh, which is another entity I'll talk about at some time. So I thought there was a little bit of a gap. What I did see a lot of on YouTube uh, was more uh, bronze, copper, modern uh, content creators than folks concentrating on this material. And the other thing that I thought was important with this channel, and you'll see in all my videos, I think if you're going to talk about the material, you got to show the material. Uh, you got to have the stuff in hand. Uh, so what you won't find on this channel is just a dude on a couch uh, just opining on different books and different themes in the hobby. Uh, one, I don't think I deserve that place yet. I'm just building it. And secondly, you've got to have the stuff in hand. I like to see the books. If you're going to um, really be connected to the material, uh, have it. There's nothing more committed than actually um, having done it yourself and bought the stuff. So that's uh, the end of that telethon. And if you can, subscribe or like the video or share it elsewhere. That will really give me support uh, to keep doing this, to keep cracking away. And I've got a lot of another themes and uh, different types of strategies and categories of collecting that you will see in subsequent videos. Amen and the story. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, back to an earlier point I made talking about ultra high grade books in your run. Here is an example of such. So it's 45. Uh, it's uh, basically a, a cover with Cyclops here. It's a fantastic cover. Uh, and this is an example of a book that is somewhere in the run uh, to buy it at the grade that you've designated for your collection meaning the base, really isn't the way to go about it. The ultra-high grade here in the 9.6, one, it's just, it's just fantastic to imagine that a book uh, from the mid to late 1960s is in this kind of a really new stand fresh condition. It's just powerful. It's awesome. It accelerates in value. Uh, it's a nice investment in and of itself. 
let alone its placement in the catalog of the stuff that you put together. Uh, and now, uh, as I mentioned before, I had to draw the line somewhere of when to end the run in terms of my collecting. And I went here um, with, with 50, uh, which is a fantastic cover. It's the second appearance of Polaris, Magneto's daughter. Uh, incidentally, we may see this character in future films in the MCU or in the X-Men lore, hopefully, because uh, she's a fantastic cover and um, wow, this is a really terrific book. It's not that expensive. If you can get this book, um, get it in the highest grade sample that you could find. And just uh, one book earlier in 49, uh, it is the first appearance of Polaris, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly as Polaris and not Polaris, I don't know, uh, in 9-4, and this is uh, the Don and Maggie Thompson collection. It's not a pedigree, it's a collection. Uh, it's probably the next best thing, and this is an awesome book in really nice shape. And uh, winding down, I've got one last book uh, to share with you here, and this is X-Men 17. Uh, it's a really great cover, and as you can imagine, in this kind of condition, in the red, this is really super hard uh, to get in higher grade. There's just so much damage and so many blemishes uh, that are exposed uh, with this type of cover. And it really is a uh, contemporary looking book. It's a fantastic, masterful uh, composition here, and None Shall Survive. It's simply um, a nice book to have. There is no um, first appearance or origin or crossover or team up or anything of that nature in this book. I had it in 9.0 for a while uh, and then I saw it in 9.2 and I immediately picked it up and I sold the, the 9.0 uh, on eBay because it wasn't a placeholder. I thought it would have been the best uh, copy or example that I could find. And then I, too, came along like a day at the prom. It was fantastic. Uh, before I go, uh, I've got some raw books here. And what I will say, uh, this, I love this, this Submariner stuff. When you go about um, putting together a run, if it's your first run and you want to sort of figure it out and get some experience uh, and get your sea legs doing it, you may want to start... Uh, with something a little less expensive or a little uh, harder um, or, or, or less difficult to obtain than the Silver Age X-Men, which, as I said, has taken me the better part of six years to put together the whole run in 9.0 plus condition, with the exception of one. You know, I do need to get one, and it's, trust me, uh, it's, it's a hole in the highway, uh, and I need to get it. Um, you may want to start with something that you could assemble and realistically put together over the course of one year or two years. That's a decent horizon to put together a collection. You don't want to rush it. You want to enjoy it and savor it and have a great time putting together uh, your collection. So if you start with some of these um, titles here, whether it's uh, Iron Man or, or Submariner, uh, even even the Avengers is a relatively uh, inexpensive run to put together, surprisingly, outside of the first book and a few of the keys, uh, such as First Vision and some others that are in that run. Don't put together, in my opinion, uh, a raw run of the material. I think it's really too hard to discern on grade, uh, and it's too hard to really determine what the the entire value of, of your collection is when you're dealing with material uh, that is not slabbed. I like it though. I mean, these are kind of fun books to pick up. Um, people have collected this material obviously for years, the whole cap, all this stuff. It's, it's awesome. Anyway, folks, that's it. I hope the video was helpful. Again, I need to suggest that go ahead and subscribe because we don't want the channel, or at least I don't, to a diet of starvation, you gotta water the plant. Uh, so take time to do so, and that helps validate what I'm doing here. Drop a comment too, if you got some ideas on what it is you'd like to see next, or you've got some ideas on this X-Men material, or maybe you got some ideas on what it takes to collect the Hulk, or something like that, have at it, thank you.